from Freedom Hall on the grounds of the Kentucky State Fair at Louisville, Kentucky, the 1969 National Convention of NFO. That's the subject of today's U.S. Farm Report, so stay tuned. This is Convention 1969. Democracy in action. A town meeting for all of rural America. From all 48 of the continental United States, 13,000 dedicated NFO members travel to Louisville, Kentucky at their own expense as representatives of their neighbors. For these people, the struggling 60s were ending. They looked forward to the possibility of a bright prosperity in the 70s, knowing that prosperity in the 70s was dependent upon NFO as the only hope of American agriculture. The dull gray December weather in Louisville failed to dampen their zeal and their enthusiasm. Some arrived early for committee meetings. In a public information meeting a day before the convention opened, NFO members shook hands all around and then listened to Speaker Ed Wimmer sound the first clear notes of a call to battle. Now, why am I in this thing? Well, I made speeches on fam saving the family farm, small business, and local bank for 37 years. And only in the last two and a half or three years did an organization pop up out of nowhere that showed an interest in the, fam in the family farm, small business, and local bank as three units of a free enterprise society. Uh, every time I talk to farm groups someplace, I tell them about the independent merchant and the banker. They say, listen, we got enough trouble without m fool worrying about the grocer or worrying about the banker. Then I talk to the grocers' conventions and I tell them about the farmers. They say, listen, we got all the problems in the world. We don't need any of the farm problems to keep us going. But all of a sudden, today, the banker is waking up, and the businessman is waking up, and the farmer is waking up that they're either going to have to win together or they're all going to lose together. And this is what's going to gain the thing. <clears throat> now, what has the definition been for the last 15 or 18 years of a farm? A piece of acreage covered by a mortgage. And I want to think as the family farm as a piece of democracy covered by earning families that are sending their kids to the churches and filling up the school buses and paying their taxes and buying the things it needs to put this American countryside back on its own feet again. And I'll tell you right today that the American countryside is not on its feet. Its feet. It's somewhere else, and I can't use the word on TV or radio. If we don't save the family farm, we don't save democracy and freedom and free enterprise and representative government in this country. And that you as a unit of a free society, that that society is only as free as the number of units that exist. Now, when we get this across to the people, we get it across to the congressmen, that our American heritage and everything in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights depends on whether we save the American countryside or not, then we're going to get someplace and not until we do. When I talked to a Rotary Club in, up in Ohio, and it was during the milk dumping day, I was supposed not to under any conditions even say anything good about the family farm. And I asked all those guys out in the audience, how many of you are mad at those fellows that dumped that tea in the ocean back over there near Boston some years ago? Nobody, of course, held up their hands. There wasn't anybody mad. I said they had to do something to get their case on the front pages, and they did, but the milk dumping days are over. The hog shooting days are over, and you all know it because now we've got a story that I believe that we can sell. Many other meetings were being held on the same day. Here, a meeting of the Committee on Rules and Bylaws becomes the forum for a major issue. NFO leaders seeking more money to expand and diversify services at all levels are asking for an increase in dues. But true to democratic practice, the issue will be put before member delegates and eventually to NFO's entire membership. Already in this meeting, the question is being debated. On Wednesday, it is brought to the floor of the convention. Wednesday, 
This first day of the convention dawns cold and wet. But inside Freedom Hall, enthusiasm runs high. The main issues are brought to the floor so that the delegates may judge them on merit. That afternoon, National Vice President Erhard Finkston gives the delegates a stirring reminder of their responsibilities. You owe those people an awful lot. You are the leaders out there in the country. The weight is on you. It can't be won at this level. It has to be won out there in the country. You have to supply the leadership there, the right kind of leadership all the way. They elected you because they believed in you. That's why you're here. You are going to determine their welfare or its destruction. Better think about it. The power is out there in the country. The production itself. That's all the power there is in this battle. There's no secret in bargaining. It's having someone, something that someone else wants, has to have, and can't get anywhere else. We have it. We have the food. And I am as convinced as I am standing here right now that if every member were to participate to the fullest extent with their production in all fields, in all commodities, it would be all over right now. <laughs> to move it that distance depends on you. What right does any man have to complain who has not participated in the marketing arrangement? <laughs> he has actually put his production against you, be he member or non-member. It has to be brought together. And you have to supply the leadership out there to do it. And anybody that does not participate, or the man that throws doubt on the people that do, or on the people who are working hard to solve this problem, he has his hand in your pocket clear up to your shoulder. In a surprise addition to the program, National President Orrin Lee Staley introduces Secretary of Agriculture Clifford Hardin. In his introduction, President Staley congratulates the Secretary on his recent reversal of a decision which would have undermined rising milo prices by dumping grain onto the market. So at this time, it gives me great pleasure and privilege to introduce to you a very fine, intelligent, 
man that I have grown to respect in our acquaintance, and as Secretary of Agriculture, Clifford Harden. We're glad to have you, Mr. Secretary. President Daly, members of the board, delegates, members, guests of the National Farmers Organization at this annual convention. I thank you, Mr. Staley, for your very cordial introduction, and may I say that I hope I don't make very many mistakes in which I have to reverse myself. <laughs> I want to say to you also, Mr. Staley, that I'm very, I'm very grateful to you for uh, your, uh, rearranging your program so that I could be here this afternoon. Uh, you, Mr. Staley had invited me a couple of months ago, and I had some difficulties with schedule, which cleared up, and I'm grateful for this opportunity to be here. I'm pleased that you were able to provide me this, this, to this uh, time today. As some of you will remember, the the president has announced two or three times that he expects the Secretary of Agriculture to speak to him on behalf of farm producers and also to be the champion for rural America. In his speech, Secretary Hardin asks that farmers be patient, asks that they give the administration more time to implement its farm programs. The delegates hear him out politely, but it's evident that their patience is limited. They are not willing to wait much longer. This is nonpartisanship. In the past, as well as at this convention, both Republicans and Democrats are heard by the delegates of the National Farmers Organization. These are the faces of rural America. This is the NFO. Concerned citizens who are working to build for the farmer his share in the high level of American prosperity. From all across the country, they have come here to ask that all be allowed to share in the wealth which they have helped to build. They have traveled to Louisville in cars and buses and airplanes. They have come in wheelchairs and with casts on their legs. Dedicated men and women of America, ranging from the youngest of FFA members to the oldest man at the convention, a 99-year-old farmer from Missouri. All through the afternoon, leaders from national headquarters tell of the tremendous strides that have brought about unexpected price increases in many farm commodities through the past year. Delegates learn how these increases have come about. They listen to Ed Groff's report on progress in dairy commodities. Ralph Kittleson reports on the grain program. Gene Potter on meat. Dell Little on specialty commodities. Bob Manke on cattle bargaining. And so the theme goes on. Vigorous leadership and dedicated members are making the NFO's program succeed. But today and in the future, even greater efforts will be necessary to solidify present gains and to ensure further progress tomorrow. On Wednesday evening, the business of the convention pauses for delegates to hear the State of the Organization speech. Vice President Fingston introduces President Staley. We heard a terrific, terrific report here this afternoon. The gains that have been made, the money that was put into the pockets of the American farmers and above all, the members of the NFO. And I think too often, we just more or less accept this as something that is due to us. Yet I wonder how many of you people, while you were hearing this, and must surely have felt proud of the organization, how many of you realized that except for one man, you wouldn't have been here at all? There'd have been no gains to report. We'd be sitting out there in the country 
see whether the Secretary of Agriculture got us to get enough sold cheap enough so that we could raise a lot more, a lot cheaper, and keep going. So we'll hear tonight the state of the organization message from what I think is the most brilliant man that I have ever known, the greatest benefactor for agriculture of all time, your national president, Oren Lee Staley. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, fellow officers, members of the National Board of Directors, the leaders that have been elected as delegates to this convention. I suppose that it would be a little short of truthful to say that I did not appreciate maybe the kind words the Vice President said. And others have said, but I feel tonight that the message that I'm going to try to bring and the thoughts that I'm going to try to get across are the, are the toughest that I've ever tried to get across to a group of people. So I came to talk to you bringing all the experience that all of us can muster to try to pinpoint what really is behind the slogan of this convention. And I wish that you would take a look at it here in the back because there's always a purpose of a slogan, of a theme, for agriculture the struggling 60s are over. The brightness of the new era of the 70s depends on the NFO. There was tremendous thought that went into this theme for various reasons. We went back in retrospect to what had happened in the years of the 60s and to what to us seemed to be ahead in the 70s. And During his speech, time, President Staley reports that NFO's collective bargaining efforts have been successful. He also notes that the job is not finished. Because of the unexpected price increases that have come about. But buying one year's time for the farmers does not solve a problem. It only gives them a little more substance to live to another day, to build the strength that can carry them to security. The NFO in the past 12 months has accomplished a feat that never before has been accomplished in the history of agriculture. The farmers, through their own effort, have been able to substantially raise the prices on many commodities. Never before in the history of agriculture has this feat been achieved. Unexpected price increases that have come about on many commodities have come about with very little change in the supply factor, meaning that in the law of supply and demand theory, the price increases cannot be justified. That in some cases where we've had substantial price increases, there have been supply increases on top of already burdensome supplies, theoretically. There has only been one new factor
structure involved. And that is a total bargaining structure of the NFO that has been able to put together the NFO collective bargaining program. That's the only new factor. And it's my job to recap briefly tonight the strategy and the principles and the theory behind these successes. That to try to get across an understanding that how these have come about. But before I do that, I want for you to reminisce a little with me. We have been through the struggling 60s, and what were they? A time when many of your and my neighbors left the farm. You have survived as farmers the greatest attrition and movement of people from rural America that we've ever witnessed. But I ask you to think of your own farming operation. I ask you to think of your own indebtedness and that of your neighbors. How many of you would have been here tonight or would be able to go to the banker next spring and borrow the money to operate if you'd been selling your hogs at 16, 17 cents and at the most possible optimistic figure that you could have thought of that could have been predicted of 20 cents. He asks the members for their backing in his plan to build an outstanding NFO staff at all levels. He asks for the help of dedicated members in a gigantic organizational drive which will bring the NFO story to all the farmers of America. In closing, he extends a challenge and an invitation to all NFO members. But the greatest thing this organization has is a county structure to the national level where you are elected at the county and come directly here where the delegates from every county Every county have a part in making the total decision, and it's debated out where there's better understanding. And so, I've said about all that I'm going to say tonight. I hope you will ask any questions you have. But I want to close with a thought. That a battle is only worth waging if you believe the battle is worthwhile. And the battle only becomes worthwhile if you are convinced it's important. And to me, if you like that home, that community that you live in and you want to protect it, then I say to you, a full commitment to this economic battle through the NFO is what you have to do. Thank you. All through the convention, our U.S. Farm Report cameras roamed the floor surveying the action. On Thursday, during a floor debate, we took a few moments away from the floor to talk with some NFO wives including an old friend of ours, Joe Grimmer of Arbuckle, California. They tell me that uh, the California contingent uh, is really something, that uh, you all chartered a great big bird for right. Louisville. How many people were aboard it? About 126, I believe, and we chartered out of our office, really? our grain office. Uh, Jim Kelsbeck, our county president, was in charge of all the arrangements, and uh, we really had a grand trip, and it gave us a chance to meet everybody, and before we got to the convention Saturday. Have you enjoyed the convention so far? Extremely. Good. It's been tremendous. Good. 
to see well, people all across the nation. Uh, listen, you know, this is not a, a, a bad uh, a kind of thing uh, for the small community of Arbuckle to mm -hmm. take on a big job like chartering uh, an airplane to Louisville yeah. to convention for all of the state of California. Yeah. Yes, it was, and I think several was with our first trip in an airplane. Is that right? Right. Was it yours? Yes. What'd you think? Well, I wish I could see the ground with fog cover or <laughs> cloud cover all the way. But I'll bet you enjoyed it, didn't you? It's tremendous. Good. Can't wait to fly Good. back. Huh? All day Thursday, the democratic processes roll on. The proposed dues increase is only one of the issues which is brought before the assembly, debated, and brought to a vote. On this issue, delegates finally recommended that all members vote for the dues increase in elections at the county level. Imagine this, 13,000 delegates gathered, 12, 15 to 20 microphones situated throughout this massive auditorium, making it possible for any one of those 13,000 delegates to go to a microphone, have his opinion heard, and have his opinion considered by the convention. This indeed is democracy in action. In the last major action of the convention, delegates voted to re-elect Orrin Lee Staley as NFO national president and Erhard Fingston as national vice president. Their acceptance speeches were brief, but stirring calls to action for all members and for all of rural America. I'll do my part. How about you? Will you do yours? speaking for the people in rural America and that they're out of step with the time. That's going to be one of our jobs, too. And number five, and this is the key, and this is, this is what I'm at, and this is what I want to get a pledge from you. I want you to make at least one day from now on till planning time a week, one day a week in FO day to do the jobs that are necessary to be done in your county so we mass a core of 30, 40, 50 people in every county to do those jobs and tie collective bargaining together so that we can continue to make the gains we made and be able to strive for the success we have worked for so hard. And that's the question I'm going to ask Will you do it? This was convention 1969. The struggling 60s are over. The brightness of the new era of the 70s depends upon NFO. Ahead lies a new challenge and a new promise. From Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky, this has been U.S. Farm Report. Thank you.